to planet Falaka, elite deep space vanguard troopers deploy state-of-the-art subsurface scanners to find the bug hives. Well, hey out there, fans, friends, feds, and frenemies. It is I, Postmodern Cowboy, and I'm here to bring you a review of the early access title that just launched today, Starship Troopers Extermination. And boy, I gotta tell you, I am, I am super, super jazzed for this one. Now, I struggled with how to encapsulate this one-of-a-kind entry, but I'm calling it a co-op, horde mode, first-person extraction shooter with a twist of goddamn or nihilism that made Paul Verhoeven's adaptation of Robert Heinlein's seminal ode to space fascism the great film it continues to be. Extermination slams down into early access with all the sound and fury of a dropship full of Rico's roughnecks. The developer for this game is the aptly named Offworld Industries, creator of legendary first-person milsim shooter Squad, and publisher of Postscriptum, a World War II shooter in the same style. Extermination brings something absolutely and fantastically new to the table. It is created in partnership with Sony TriStar, the studio behind the eponymous Verhoeven film. This is, to put it simply, a massive expansion of the existing Starship Troopers IP, and is the best thing to come along since the original movie, taking its place well ahead of a handful of mediocre made-for-TV adaptations and animated series. Now, the premise of Extermination is simple. There are three gameplay modes available in the menu in Early Access, each of them designed around gameplay for teams of 16 players, with some indication that more maps or modes will be added in the future. Classic Squad AAS, or that is Assault and Secure, appears here as the first available option. A series of randomized objectives leads you and your team through a number of tasks, repairing or securing positions on the map. Once you have cleared through to a certain point, and escalated the arachnid infestation to its maximum level, you will have a few minutes to go to ground and prepare defenses around an arc, a large subsurface sensor triangulating the subterranean swarm. You will need to defend the arc for several minutes until it is either destroyed, as often happens in the harder veteran difficulty mode, or until you or your team are able to run a few hundred meters through the besieging swarm in order to reach an extraction shuttle. Once the shuttle arrives, death becomes permanent, and you stand to lose a lot of XP from your overall mission total if you get killed extracting. And it is certainly not unheard of, after a particularly brutal route back to the dropship, for you to be the only person who makes it out alive. Forget chicken dinner. Let's talk about survivor's guilt. Now, arc mode is completely different, with players having to strike out from a central base location in order to obtain the resources to fortify their position or charge the base's arc. This prolonged siege mode has unique challenges and world events, with the team having to split itself in a coordinated fashion between resource collectors and defenders. The third and final mode is the classic horde mode popularized across the genre, but it's still listed as coming soon. As far as classes, there are three entry-level classes, and this is actually the source of my primary gripe with the game. The Hunter is a jetpack-equipped infantry soldier who fights with assault rifles or sniper rifles and acts somewhere between light infantry and scout saboteur. The Bastion is a heavily armored soldier, and I mean much, much more armored, who can deploy a defensive ring shield, providing cover for themselves and their teammates while laying down fire from a squad automatic weapon. The Operator has all of the support capabilities possible. They operate a medical UAV and can carry healing items or ammunition containers and dispensers for their team. From what I can tell, it should take about 10 to 15 hours of gameplay per class in order to unlock all the items. That leaves a lot of content to unlock for you completionist types, but it's the depth and versatility of these classes which actually forms the bulk of my criticism. Now, Starship Troopers is, let's agree, not a movie about superheroes, and while yes, we do see jetpack infantry and specialized troops using a variety of weapons and equipment, the backbone of the mobile infantry is, well, well uh, it, it's the mobile infantry. And I feel like Offworld fudged this a little by deliberately picking the Deep Space Vanguard Corps, who are elite mobile infantry, and I feel like I'm playing in a team of Starship Troopers-themed superheroes or Overwatch characters, rather than in a gritty, grimdark world where big bugs are out to eat the little guy. But that is really my only gripe, so let's take a minute to cover what the game does well. Multiplayer is seamless, and matches feel full and animated. The inclusion of built-in VoIP is a nice carryover from Team Play Mandatory Squad and Postscript. I also noticed that it's very easy to mute individual players, which became important uh, as I was playing in a server where half of the players didn't speak the same language. Again, I'd prefer not to have to mute anybody, but uh, it got pretty confusing with the crosstalk that I couldn't understand. Some people complained about FPS, or 
oh my god, my frames in matches. But I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. When I first loaded the game up, it ran poorly, and I wasn't even able to screen capture with my video card. But weirdly, when I turned the graphics up to epic and set the FPS limiter to 60 FPS, it started running smooth as silk. This is a pretty welcome departure from Offworld's main game, Squad, a much older but less optimized game which I cannot screen capture with the same OBS Studio application because of the excessive CPU load. The graphics are overall fantastic, and a terrifying number of arachnids can appear on screen at once. The lighting is good, the ambient and atmospheric effects are good. Everything in the environment that is supposed to act as a cue or hint works in conjunction with the HUD to give me all the information I need as a player about what's going to happen. The sound, well, let's face it, aside from its sweeping orchestral score, which tries really hard to be Wagner and Basil Polidorus, without actually being Wagner or Basil Polidorus, the game only has one sound. But it does it really, really well, and the bullets feel like they have weight and mass appropriate to the caliber, with nice visual effects registering clear effect on target. And on that topic, with respect to the Morita 7.62mm rifles, I'm never left wondering if I hit something. I haven't appreciated firing full auto for hours on end this much since PlayStation games like Killzone or Black pioneered awesome gunplay. The physics are a bit janky. I think it's the word other reviewers have used. A mix between the limitations of the medium and the need to simplify ragdolls for hundreds of on-screen enemies results in some pretty comical death animations or weirdness. Uh, but I'll be honest, it feels like they're so far along in development that little changes like that are going to be pretty easy to implement. The building is another area where some small improvement could be made. The current grid system feels almost like a mini-game, and it's far, far too easy for someone to play as an ammo box beside the arc in AAS, blocking walls or electric fences. I, I do hope that there are uh, not just new building pieces, um, but a more expanded approach to uh, building uh, away from the grid in a way that allows for better customization and tactical design. Overall, this game kills it for its setting, and its faithful adherence to the IP, super heroic characters notwithstanding. I can't wait to see what they do to expand the depth of the cooperative gameplay to the scale of a sort of campaign, which transcends short matches, something the developers have hinted at in their early roadmap. That said, the matches are really balanced, and you can get through two fulfilling matches in about an hour of gameplay. My predictions are that as ARC developments continue, the future is going to bring us some Brain Bug vs. Neil Patrick Harris moments as well as airstrikes, flying bugs, mech suits, and more. In closing, I want to touch briefly on the modding history that led to extermination. Squad Bugs was a mod for Offworld Squad game, which, while now extremely outdated, clearly established the precedent for using the Squad engine to tell stories in the Starship Troopers universe. The successor to Squad Bugs was Squad Troopers, which retains an active player base. In fact, almost all the features you are seeing in Starship Troopers Extermination already exist in Squad Troopers, which seems to feature a much more freeform base building approach, begging the question of why Offworld didn't choose to go with its classic gridless base construction system. As far as I can tell, and as far as the mod developers have said, there's also no overlap between Squad Troopers and Extermination developments, meaning that on some level, Offworld and TriStar may have reinvented the wheel and impinged on its own modding community by releasing a commercial product with many of the same features. Of course, Offworld does make highly moddable games. I'm not sure if there's a plan to release mod tools for Starship Troopers, but I can see some great potential for Warhammer 40k, Aliens, Colonial Marines, or even just Troopers Realism mods, if that happens. Now, I'm not normally a Horde Mode gamer. I like survival games, I like milsim shooters, but I've always carried a soft spot in my heart for Starship Troopers and the Goddardamerung scenarios which arise as a few battle the many for their citizenship and survival. All things considered, this game is great. You should get it, you should play it, and based on the quality we're seeing in early access, you should look forward to a long, icor spattered future. I'm going to give Starship Troopers Extermination a solid 9 out of 10, and think that with the addition of a few classes and minor improvement to the physics, this one-of-a-kind game could easily be a perfect touchdown.